I drove technocracy in a way. He was the only one who could have stopped Hive Mind Empires. Technocracy was a hero. I just couldn't see it. He was a, a thief, a criminal. He's a menace to the entire city. I want technocracy prosecuted. I want technocracy. And here we are in 2230. I've managed to get a comfortable 15K worth of cruisers out. I've managed to get 1.4K of tech research every month. For a long time now, regular biological empires have been unable to compete with the meta in Stellaris. I'm talking about the Void Dwellers, the Hive Minds, the Machine Empires, all of those races have basically meant that regular biological empires are unable to compete and unable to keep up with those complete powerhouse builds. But ladies and gentlemen, don't worry because today we are getting regular empires back in the meta. And the way I've done this, the build I'm going to run, really does focus heavily on technocracy and I'm going to be getting a lot of benefit out of that. But there are other variations that I believe can perform almost as well, if not even better, in the right trained hands. But without any further ado, let's dive in and look at the build. This is the Galactic Poveran Polity. To all intents and purposes, a very normal, regular biological empire. We've even gone with one of the most normal, regular origins, and that is Prosperous Unification. Prosperous Unification will give us an extra few pops at the start of the game and two extra districts. On top of that, it's not mentioned here, but we get some nice juicy bonuses to our homeworld. But you might be asking, Prosperous Unification, that is such a bog standard normal origin. Why on earth is it anywhere near a meta build? Well, I'm going to show you why it's so great later on. But basically, the gist of it here is going to be that those extra four pops and that bonus to your homeworld are fantastic for getting ahead economically early. Taking a look over at our population, we've got the Povrans. Now, rapid breeders, we're going to be increasing the growth speed of our pops. That's going to be really important to push ahead. Intelligent, that is going to increase our research income. We really want that. And the final positive trait we're going to have is aquatic. You need the aquatic DLC for this, but it's going to be really, really good for the first 30 years. Your homeworld is 100% habitability, but what aquatic will do is it will make the two guaranteed habitable worlds which will end up being ocean worlds plus 20% habitability which will mean they will be 100% habitability as well which is fantastic you won't get any penalties for living on those worlds there will be no upkeep uh, income increases to upkeep and you won't be having any reduced incomes in addition to that all of your basic resources food energy and minerals will be outputting an extra 10% on all of these ocean worlds and your housing usage will go down 10%. That is really going to help you with logistic pop growth as the game goes on. For negative traits, I've gone with Unruly. Yes, Unruly is a little bit worse in 3.3. Now that we can no longer have administrative capacity or increase our administrative capacity beyond 100, this will bite you in the bum a little bit. But overall, it's probably only really going to be a 6 to 7% increase in your empire sprawl, or as we like to call it now, empire size. And that is going to be really negligible in the first 40, 50 years. We're probably talking 2% maybe 3%, probably a bit less increase to our research, uh, research cost as well as our tradition cost. But that should be completely offset by the inclusion of intelligent. So taking unruly, if you're going to take something like intelligent or rapid breeders, in my opinion, totally offsets it. And then later on, if it starts becoming a little bit of a problem, let's say you have 1500 or 2000 empire size, you can almost certainly mod unruly out of your species or just synthetically ascend and you won't have to worry about it at all. And if you're enjoying this video, please peer review that like button. Now we get over to what is quite interesting and I'm quite happy about. So we've got a regular run-of-the-mill biological empire here. We are materialists. That's going to give us some great things. We're going to be allowed to have academic privilege living standard, reduced robot upkeep, increased research speed. 
militarists, that's going to increase our ship fire rate, decrease our claim cost. Nowadays influences, well you're going to have so much of it that reducing your claim influence cost, really that's not a big deal. And xenophobe, we can purge aliens, we can enslave aliens. We can do lots of great fun things, but most importantly here, our pop growth speed is going to get a juicy 10% bonus. In terms of our government flavor, I've gone with oligarchic. That's because I like to get a little bit of extra unity for my factions, and I really, really like the oligarchic election type. I think it's the most flexible and easy to use to get the traits that you want. You can, however, with this build, use any of the uh, different empire types or authorities from democratic all the way over to imperial. Whichever one is your favorite, pick that one. It really won't make any difference. There's a case to be made for starting with democratic, which allows you to have quite a few elections in the early years until you get a ruler that you like, and then you could switch over to dictatorial. That would also help as later on, dictatorial is going to be somewhat useful at reducing your empire size. The best part of this build though is definitely the civics. Now we've got technocracy. For a long time this was massively meta, then it did get Get somewhat nerfed into the floor and now it has come back swinging stronger than ever in my opinion. What is going on with technocracy? Well we no longer get any unity from our researchers, that's gone, but we no longer get an increased consumer good cost. We still replaced some of our administrators, they're now called politicians, with science directors. Those science directors get all of the bonuses like intelligent, they're going to apply to them, as well as any bonuses that apply to researchers. And those science directors produce a hell of a lot of research while still producing, or now producing, the exact same number of amenities as a politician. Sneakily, you also get access to plus one research alternatives. At the start of the game, that is massively important for beelining for the technologies you need. I'm looking at you, alloy building technologies, and anything with volatile moats. But wow, technocracy, great. As well as that, if you're not going for a trade build, and you can tell from the traits here, I've not taken thrifty, I'm not going for a trade build with this empire, Masterful Crafters is without a doubt one of the strongest, and I really do mean strongest civics around. You want to be minimizing the number of artisans you have in your empire. You do want consumer goods, you want to be breaking even, but you can't spend your consumer goods really on anything except you've got that one decision yes you can spend a few hundred distribute luxury goods and you'll get some bonuses through amenities that's fine but a massive excess of consumer goods doesn't help you what masterful crafters allows you to do first off it reduces the number of artisans well they they get called artificers down uh by about 20% because you're going to be getting plus one consumer good output base. That means you're going from six to seven consumer goods. But on top of that, you'll be producing some trade value. You'll probably turn that straight into energy and a little bit of engineering research. But that's not all, ladies and gentlemen. You're also, for every three industrial districts, going to get access to a building slot. That is going to reduce your dependency on needing pointless city districts to unlock those building slots because you're probably going to have an alloy world. You might even have a consumer goods world. Those worlds are going to need building slots just to have any of the nice normal buildings you'll want to have there. Masterful crafters will be reducing the city districts you need for that basically. And you're not really gonna want to be running any clerks with this build. They're not going to be very efficient. So city districts are in essence just a sunk cost to get access to those buildings. So right at the start of the game on your capital, you're going to start off with two extra technicians and two extra farmers. You're also going to have the prosperous unification modifier. That is going to last for 20 years, it's going to give you 10% extra resources from jobs, 25% amenities, and 15% extra happiness. That is going to make your capital massively important for producing resources of any kind. You're not going to have many amenities issues for a while, and you're also going to not have any happiness problems. Do all the normal things like upgrading your ships to get the alloys back from them and deleting them. Change your diplomatic stance to isolationist for extra unity. 
and you should definitely change the living standards of your population over to academic privileges. Not only is that going to boost your research output by 10%, it will also increase the happiness of rulers and specialists by 15%. That is up 5% for rulers and 10% for specialists from the base values, and an increased specialist political power from 100% all the way up to 400%, if we compare it to something like decent conditions. Yes, you double the consumer good upkeep for your specialists, but the population of your planet are going to be so absolutely overwhelmingly happy that it becomes worth it from a consumer good standpoint. The first things you're going to want to do on your capital, you'll probably want to build another generator district or replace an agriculture district with a generator district, as well as putting out some research labs. I've ended up with quite a lucky start here. I have two ocean worlds directly adjacent to my capital. I can see them. My first move is going to be to go out, survey those worlds, and then put down colony ships as fast as possible. You can actually begin building a colony ship in the second month of the game with this build, with a regular biological empire, and that is really powerful. Once you've upgraded your primary fleet to reclaim the alloys, disband them, and you should have around 245 alloys in the bank. Let the month tick over until February, the second month of the year, and then you can sell some of these alloys, making sure not to go below 200, and you can buy 100 consumer goods, and that should give you the resources available to start building a colony ship within one month of the game starting. Now, as it takes a whole year for a colony ship to be ready, this means that while this is happening, if you have any adjacent planets with habitable worlds like this system here, not very many stars, I can send a science ship out and a construction ship, survey it, build a star base here, and then move my colony ship in straight away within the first year or so. You're also going to start the game with a massive energy income. I am using that to buy as many alloys as I can per month without damaging the price. That is 13 alloys per month, as well as buying a few consumer goods and a few minerals just to get my economy going. The alloys are especially important because they're going to be essential for expanding into space, building new star bases, and upgrading those star bases so we can put some lovely buildings on them. You'll probably also want to recruit an intellectual governor at some point. Don't do this straight away because it is going to cost you some unity. And at the very start of the game, your unity income is going to be quite low. It's going to be around, around 20, as you can see here. So around five to 10 years into the game, it's probably worth it to get rid of your current governor, unless they've got a trait you really absolutely love, like architectural interest, and recruit an intellectual governor. And if you're enjoying this video and other videos on this channel, you can help to support this channel by either becoming a channel member, supporting this channel through Patreon, or purchasing something on the Humble Bundle store. Links to all of these are down in the description below. For traditions, I'd recommend going down the prosperity tree. The mining station output at the start isn't going to seem very important, but later on it will be quite useful. Standard construction templates should be your first pick here. The reduction to build costs of buildings and districts is great, and that 25% increase to your build speed is going to be really useful later on. Following that, I'd recommend you jump down to Pursuit of Profit for the extra 5% specialist resource output, and then finish it off in any order you like. And when you finish up Prosperity, you're going to get a very juicy 5% resources from jobs on all planets, and plus 5 stability. That stability will translate into an additional 3% resource output from jobs, so you're basically getting an extra 8% to your resources from jobs on every planet. As soon as you have access to the hydroponics farming technology, you should definitely take this one. Hydroponic bays are going to be crucial so that you can remove all of the food producing jobs from your planets and instead put them into space. Global energy management is another essential technology you should pick up as soon as you see it. Both energy grid and capacity subsidies are going to be really important for this build to get your economy off the ground and racing. And as soon as you scrape together enough consumer goods for your second colony ship, build it. Hopefully you can do this within the first three years. I've done it by November of the second year. When you get access to a colony, 
I'd recommend you do something that might seem a little weird, and but this is when you finally develop your first colony and your population emerge from their shelters, ready to begin working for your great and glorious empire, I'd recommend you do something a little weird. Now, I've not built any Unity buildings yet. I've only put science buildings and extra energy buildings on my capital. I'd recommend the first building you build on these new worlds is an administrative office. And then you're going to want to make sure that your pops stop working the colonist job and start working the administrative job once you have the administrative offices up and running. You are going to quickly find you have some consumer good problems. I then recommend the second building you build on your first colony is a civilian industries. Make this colony something of a consumer goods outputting world, whereas push your second colony to be mainly making alloys. Once your colony goes over the five population limit, you'll no longer have access to the colony designation. That means your amenities are going to crash and therefore your happiness and therefore stability. You can solve this by simply allowing one pop to jump into the colonist job. That's going to reduce your amenities issue and due to your academic privilege species rights your specialists are going to be pretty happy even with a whopping 18 percent slap in the face to their happiness and please let me know what you think about the changes to technocracy in this new 3.3 libra patch down in the comments below when you do finally complete prosperity don't go for the regular technological ascendancy ascension perk instead I would recommend you go for Executive Vigor. That should allow you to run both capacity subsidies and mining subsidies without going over your edict cap. As the weeks and months pass in the game, you will find that the amount you're spending on edicts does go over your edict fund, but when that happens, you have a couple of options. Either disable mining subsidies and attempt to get the minerals from elsewhere or take the mineral hit, or alternatively, swallow the extra unity costs until you can research some technologies to increase your available edict fund. Before 2230, you will probably only be able to complete two traditions. So if you're wanting to go on the aggressive very quickly, I'd recommend you take Supremacy. Completing that will make your navies much cheaper and much more powerful. However, if you think it's not going to be until around 2240 or 2250 that you're going to have to fight anyone, I would instead recommend you go for Discovery. Reducing the research upkeep is going to be very useful, as well as also getting a unlocking the research subsidies edict, that can be really helpful for increasing your research output even further. In order to balance amenities on your capital, you are going to need to get something like a hollow theater in the end. However, on your two colonies, you can almost certainly make do with just having luxury residences. One or two of these buildings should account for all of the amenities issues you're facing along with a distribution of luxuries. And because you're going to be building lots and lots of industrial districts, you should have, thanks to master crafters, an abundance of building slots to put luxury residences in. As ever, make sure to get your hands on someone with the Agenda Fleet expansion when you come to your election in 2220. That's going to really help with your military buildup. Before building your fleet, you should also make sure to get a governor with the retired fleet officer trait. In order to do that, you must get your hands on an admiral and you must have researched interstellar fleet traditions. And here we are in 2230, I've managed to get a comfortable 15k worth of cruisers out with some reasonably good plasma cannons on, although my shields do leave a little to be desired. Due to the fantastic pop growth I'm getting, as well as also pushing out some robot assembly quite early, I've ended up with 88 population across my empire. That's comparable to a clone army start, so that's really quite good. And if I don't go for a military buildup, but instead focus only on technology, I've managed to get 1.4K of tech research every month. That is equivalent to the output we used to be getting from both the ring world start for machine empires way way back in 2.9 that was wild wild times and it's also very close to what you can get from the tech rush of a clone army build 
It is great to be able to play as a regular biological empire again and be up there with the big bad boys of meta. Yes, you're not going to have the scaling of something like a hive mind, but you can still fight toe to toe with them at 2230 when the peace begins to end in those multiplayer games. And technocracy will always have a special place in my heart. In this video, I've talked a lot about what you should do with your two colony planets, but I've not really mentioned the capital world very much. If you'd like to know my thoughts on capital specialization, click the video on screen now.